Hello there, welcome back to another session on cybersecurity. In this session, we're going to take a demonstration on network file system attack. So we're going to use Kali Linux and from Kali Linux, we're going to try and access a shared file from across the network on from a victim machine. So before going into this attack, let's see what is a network file system. What is the use of this? A network file system is nothing but a distributed file system protocol that allows the access of files and directories on remote computers as if they were local. So let me put it in simple words. Say we have uh, two systems. There is a directory in the system which contains uh, a set of files. Let's say the file name is L. A remote system, a user uh, from a remote system will be able to access this file as if that file is available locally. So he'll be able to read, write, do changes to the file using his own operating system commands. So you're accessing a file that is present uh, remotely, but it will be like that file is present on your system, on your drives, and you can make modifications to the file. The use of network file system is for distributed file systems. That is, you can access files from a remote system as if they were local to your system so you can create remove read write set file attributes and you can do a lot of things and it depends on the kinds of permissions you give to the user on this file see you can uh, give read write you can just mention read access you can uh, let any system uh, to access this file any user from any system to access this file or you can limit uh, the users by using the ip address so here it comes to configurational, uh, it comes to the settings that you make to your network file system that matters the most. So if you misconfigure your network file system, say if you allow access to the files from any system and you're not going to have any restrictions, you're going to give read write access, you're going to give root access, then it's going to be the hacker's uh, time. He's going to come in, take your file, modify it, get root access to your system, and it's going to gain more privileges and then do a lot of damage to your system. So we're going to understand all these things using a demonstration. And uh, let's take a quick look at the uh, lab setup for this demonstration. So I have my Windows operating system, Gust OS, on which I have my virtual box, uh, which is uh, 7.0 version. And on this, I have Kali Linux, uh, running which will be my attacker system and i have metasploitable 2 the vulnerable linux machine so on this machine i have installed this nfs server and uh, uh, after installation of this nfs server i have made uh, changes such that the home uh, directory is the directory that is getting uh, shared across for this uh, remote user and uh, for this uh, we should first install the server start the service Next, what we should do is we should make the changes such that uh, we enable this uh, directory as the shared directory and we also give read write permission on the directory. We also give root access for the users accessing this directory and we'll also configure it such a way that any user from any system can actually access this directory. So it's like a, a, a wrong uh, misconfiguration that we are doing. And that what happens uh, the more sometimes sometimes we leave it with the default and that uh, gives uh, that uh, gives more privilege to the hackers to gain access to your files so this uh, these two machines are uh, communicating using the host only adapter uh, uh, network option in virtual box so this is the lab setup so we'll first see how to install this nfs server on metasploitable 2. let's go to the demonstration now Let's start with a demonstration. So here I have my Kali Linux machine and uh, here I have my Metasploitable uh, machine. So this is my vulnerable Linux machine. So the first step is we need to install our NFS server. For this, the command is uh, sudo apt-get install. Uh, the server is NFS kernel iPhone server. So I've already installed this. So you should first install the server next you should make some changes to the file on the server the exports file so sudo nano so you should uh, go to this file the exports file and make some changes so let's uh, enter the password msf admin so this is the file for nfs server we are saying here we'll be exporting the home directory and star here means uh, we can access this directory from any system it's not restricted by any ip address here 
So this is a misconfiguration we are uh, making. We are giving access to this directory from any system and we are giving read write access. Not only that, uh, no root squash here means we are giving a root access to the user. So all these things uh, are the kinds of misconfigurations that we are doing here. So we have to change the exports file for our NFS server. This is the second uh, thing. And uh, we'll come out of this and let me clear screen. The next thing is we should be starting our service. So it is uh, sudo. Uh, we should start our NFS uh, server, etc init.d and NFS uh, kernel server and then we'll start so we should uh, start the services uh, started now and uh, the next thing is uh, we can see the list of uh, drives uh, we have mounted uh, using this specific command called show mount show mount e and then we'll give the ip address of the system 192.168.56.103 so this should uh, actually list uh, the directory so it's a slash home this is the directory that we are mounting and this directory can be accessed remotely from kali linux that's the meaning here and star here means that it can be accessed from any system not only kali linux any ip address so there is no ip address restriction here so that's about uh, our NFS uh, server. We have started it. We have made the changes uh, to the file. Now let's move on to our Kali Linux. The first thing is we should create a directory. Say from this directory, we'll be accessing those files like it's a local file. So for this, we should create a directory. So sudo make directory. I've already run these commands. I've mounted this. So I have created this directory and uh, the directory is uh, up and uh, ready. The next thing is we should uh, go to this file, uh, sudo nano, this specific file, and we should uh, make uh, certain changes. So let's uh, enter the root password. And uh, here is this. We should enter what is the IP address of our uh, victim and what is the directory that is being shared by the victim. And uh, this directory is mapped to which local directory. So this is the directory we have created in Kali Linux that we have to give and we also give some permissions here that's it so these changes we have to make uh, don't worry about these commands i'll be sharing this on code spindle you can very well use these commands uh, when you're trying out this demonstration so next thing is uh, we should uh, uh, reload these uh, changes that we have made to these files so we'll perform sudo uh, systemctl uh, daemon reload so we're going to type this command so that it picks over the changes that we have uh, made to this file and uh, finally what we have to do is we have to mount that uh, specific uh, directory on our uh, client machine so for that the command is sudo mount and uh, that's the command i've already mounted this so this uh, command you should run so that it's going to mount this specific directory from my remote ip slash home as if it's a local directory so this I've already mounted. Uh, let me just try it out. Yeah, it's mounted. So now I can move to my directory cd uh, mount slash nfs. So now I am inside this directory. When I perform ls, you can see I'm able to access the files of my uh, victim's home directory here. All these files are there on my is there on my victim machine. Let's uh, take a look at this. So here uh, I have this. Uh, uh, let me traverse to home and uh, let me perform an ls so you're able to see satish copy dot text uh, msf admin so these files are actually in the home directory in my uh, client i mean my, in my victim so these files are there in the home directory of my victim which i'm able to access these files as if they are local files in my system so i'm going to this directory and then i'm able to access this say i can perform nano satish copy dot text so hello hacker i am here so i can change this file since i read write access Yes, uh, the hacker uh, Satish, so I'm not a real hacker here, but yes, the hacker Satish got your file. So I'm able to make changes to this file since I've given read write access, uh, permission denied, maybe uh, control X, uh, let's uh, say sudo nano Satish copy dot text. Let's uh, perform this uh, and let's say, uh, yes, uh, Satish uh, CJ, the hacker, knows you <laughs> let's uh, perform this now see it's written so we are making changes to this file which is actually present where it's actually present in the victim now let's perform a nano satish copy dot text from here let's see whether these changes are reflected here 
yes satish cj the hacker knows you <laughs> so we are able to this is what we are seeing in the uh, initial uh, definition what is the definition uh, it stands for um, network file system stands for um, a distributed file system protocol that helps you access files and directories located on remote computers as if they were local i hope now you understood the meaning of this see we are able to access the remote files in a remote system and make modifications to this as if it was a local file using our own os commands and that uh, is being reflected in the client as well so this is an nfs system so what is the weakness here is i am allowing access from any ip i am not restricting it with ip so if you are restricting that by ip in the exports file instead of a star you should give the ip address so that is uh, one of the things and we should not give read write access uh, to our uh, directory so that uh, people don't change uh, your files so these are certain uh, configurational uh, uh, things factors you should keep in mind while you are going with network file system i hope you all have understood what is a network file system the use of a network file system how to mount a network file system and how to share directories across uh, systems and finally what are the weaknesses or what are the flaws that can occur while you are configuring a network file uh, system or sharing a directory with users so that's it for this session i hope you got a good insight on all these things if you have any questions leave those questions as comments below i'll be looking into those comments and i'll try and answer it to your comments uh, that's it for now have a great day.